welcome to our first virtual tree ID walk. We're really excited to get started. Uh, if you join us, if you're just coming on, send us a wave. Let us know you're here, you're watching, you're ready to learn about trees today. Um, just a reminder, uh, as we're going through the walk, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and we'll try to answer them as we're walking along. Um, as we are identifying trees today, uh, those of you who may not have seen the introduction video, we are going to cover four basic questions. Question one, is the tree a conifer or a broadly flowering tree? Question two, is the tree an evergreen or a deciduous tree? Question three, is the leaf simple or compound? And question four, is the leaf arrangement opposite or alternate? So thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, if you're just coming on, send us a wave. We're really excited to walk along today. Um, it's a beautiful day. Got lots of trees to look at today. Anyone who's just joining us, send us a wave, let us know that you're here. And I think we're ready to get started. So uh, hopefully everybody is enjoying the sunshine today. Thanks for joining us on our first virtual tree ID tour. Hopefully everyone can walk around in your own neighborhood and maybe see some of these species for yourself later on today. Uh, so the first tree that we're going to look at is a tulip poplar tree. Joy, the camera should be. So the tulip poplar tree, um, Liriodendron tulipifera. So this tree, if you come across it in the woods, uh, you are going to see a tree that is very tall with a very straight trunk. It's a narrower tree. Uh, here in this open space, it is stretching out a little bit more. Uh, this tree commonly gets up to 70 to 100 feet tall, but out in the woods, you might see it growing as tall as 150 feet. In fact, George Washington planted tulip poplar trees in his house at Mount Vernon in Virginia that are now 140 feet tall. The tulip poplar tree is really popular with pollinators. Uh, it has a beautiful flower that we'll take a look at in a second. Um, and when we walk up to the tree, you know, those first four questions that we're going to ask are about, um, you know, is the tree a broadleaf or a conifer, right? So we have a broadleaf flowering tree. It's a deciduous species. It has a simple leaf with an alternate leaf arrangement. So come on over. So I always remember uh, the shape of the leaf of this tree because it looks like the head of a cat. Uh, so you can see the little ears, the whiskers, the indent at the top of the leaf. Um, some people remember it though because it might look a little bit like the outline of a tulip flower. And you can see those tulip poplar flowers on the tree, uh, yellow and orange. Um, they're a beautiful flower and they might remind you a little bit of the next tree that we're going to look at, which the tulip poplar is related to. Um, and the tulip poplar tree um, has been used uh, to make dugout canoes. Some people call it the canoe tree, actually. Um, so lots of cool history there. Um, the flowers eventually turn into this fruit. So you can see the seeds of the tree. Very cool looking. And taking a look at the twig, I think there's some fallen twigs over here.
one thing that we can look for is the stipule scar. And so there's scars that come all the way 360 degrees around the twig, those lines that make a complete circle. And that's one indication that our tulip poplar tree is actually a member of the magnolia family. And so that's what we're going to be looking at next. So we're looking at a broadleaf tree, but it's also an evergreen. You know, things that we don't always put together. Um, when we think of uh, broadleaf flowering trees, we usually think about deciduous species, but this one is an evergreen tree. And uh, the underside of the leaves are that rusty brown color. Uh, normally, you know, we'll remember uh, those big magnolia flowers. They might resemble a little bit of the shape of the tulip pot flower tulip poplar flower we just looked at, except they're going to be white, very fragrant flowers. Um, and you can see that they are budding out right now. Uh, those flowers will come out uh, in May or June. So they're coming soon. They should be around for a lot of the summer. So we're excited for that. Um, magnolia trees, they're more endemic to coastal areas. So you're not going to see them so much if you're walking around out in the woods, but you'll definitely see them around your neighborhood. And magnolia trees are very cool because they are a very old tree. And so there are magnolia fossils that are over 50 million years old. So very cool tree and a lot of magnolia flowers are actually pollinated by beetles instead of bees because the tree existed before bees did. So pretty cool fact there. Uh, let's keep walking and see what else we find. Do we have any questions? No questions yet. Feel free to submit your questions in the comments and we'll try to get to them as we're walking along. Thanks for joining us today, guys. If you're just hopping on, send us a wave. actually really funky. So this is a young tree, uh, but you can see that it's just veering off to the left right there, uh, which is really interesting and it makes this species very much a character tree. Just has a lot of that unique shape and curvature to the limbs. Um, so let's take a closer look. So this tree is going to be another broadleaf flowering tree. It has a simple leaf, it's deciduous, and it has an alternate leaf leaf. There's not a lot of defining characteristics. They're a pretty simple leaf, um, smooth margins. Sometimes you'll see the occasional serration on the leaf. And typically they're gonna be wider towards the tip than towards the base. And so uh, the tree that I most commonly get confused with the black tooth below is a persimmon. And persimmon is definitely gonna have a wider base than at the tip. Um, so that's the trick that I usually use to tell them apart. The black tupelo is an amazing tree to plant near your yard uh, because it has wonderful fall color. It actually turns red, purple, yellow, all kinds of stuff in the fall that just makes it outstanding to plant. And uh, birds love it too. The flowers produce this small berry-like fruit fruit, uh, kind of like a blueberry, and so it's attractive to birds. And uh, anybody ever heard of tupelo honey? It's one of the most desirable honeys in the world. And in Florida, it's over a million dollar industry every year.
line is one that we really can't see where the leaves are at. Um, but we know that it's an evergreen tree, it's a conifer, it's a conifer with needles. And so pine trees always have needles in bundles. So let's take a closer look at what's happening. So when we can't see the leaves um, up in the air, uh, what we can do is look on the ground and see what we find down here. And so finding some needles. All of these are in bundles. So they're all grouped together by this little thing here, and that's characteristic of a pine tree. Most pine trees in our area are going to be longer than two inches. If you go up into the mountains, you might see some that are a little different. Um, but they're always going to be in a bundle like this. And so the first thing that you do when you're trying to identify a pine tree with these needles is that you're going to find the bundle and you're going to count how many needles per bundle. So this tree, it looks like mostly there's two needles per bundle. And then we're gonna look at how long these needles are. This is probably around four and a half, five inches long. Um, and so this tree, uh, really it's characteristic mostly by that bark. This is a short leaf pine. And so we're looking at these rectangular plates of bark. And then if you come on in close, you can actually see these resin pockets here, um, these little dimples in the bark. And that's very characteristic of the short leaf pine as well. Um, and then if you look up, you'll see that there's really not a lot of dead branches on this tree, which is common with the Virginia pine, but the shortleaf pine is self-pruning. And so all those dead branches are falling off and the canopy is really at the top of the tree. So this tree gets 70 to 100 feet tall and you'll find it all over in our woods. Um, the cones of this tree are really so they're about two and a half inches long, egg-shaped, very short stem on the cones, almost non-existent. Nice. The next tree that we're going to look at is a type of hickory. It is a pignut hickory, Aria glabra, and uh, this is the first tree that we're going to look at that has a compound leaf. Oh, which is pretty exciting. So this is one of our broadleaf trees. It's deciduous. It has a compound leaf and it is an alternate leaf arrangement. So this is one leaf. It has five leaflets. So with the pignut hickory, the caria glabra, it's going to have between five and seven leaflets. So the most of the ones we can see on this branch here have five. Um, they are um, arranged along a line. So um, pinnately compound is what we call it, like a pin. And uh, the terminal leaflet, the one up here, is going to be bigger than the rest for this pignut hickory. Now we live in an oak hickory forest, and so hickories are very common. And the two most common species of hickory are pignut hickory and mockernut hickory. And with the pignut hickory, they have very smooth leaves and very smooth petioles or leaf stems. Uh, but with a mockernut hickory, if you were to flip this over and look at the back of the leaves, the stem of the leaf, everything would be very hairy. Mockernut hickories have seven to nine leaflets. So this is definitely our pignut hickory. It gets its name because pigs like to eat the hickory nuts. Uh, it has beautiful yellow fall color, so it's really an outstanding specimen if you see it in the forest in October, November time frame. evergreen conifer. This is an eastern red cedar. Now we call it a cedar, but it's actually a type of juniper. Uh, some of you might be familiar with the creeping junipers that you plant along the ground as ground cover. This is an upright juniper. Uh, so eastern red cedar, Juniperus virginiana, and this tree, uh, instead of needles, it has scales. 
Um, now the eastern red cedar, it likes to be in full sun, but you find it growing all over the woods. And uh, take a close look at the bark there. It's very cool as well. It's got kind of that flaky texture. And so uh, eastern red cedar, uh, it produces, the female cone it produces, most people call it a juniper berry. It's not actually a berry, it's a cone, uh, but that is what people use to create gin. Um, so it's more common with the common juniper, is uh, those juniper berries are what we use to make gin, but you can make it from eastern red cedar trees. So pretty cool. And then of course the wood, we're all familiar with that bright red wood that's popular with furniture uh, or bowls or anything like that. Um, that is a beautiful color, so we see that a lot, eastern red cedar wood. We have two more trees that we're going to look at today. Let us know if you have any, let us know if you have any questions in the comments. All right, here is our next tree. This tree is called a sassafras tree, sassafras albidum. And so sassafras trees are really edge species. So you see this one is right on the edge of the forest. It's in the mid range of canopy. And so it gets anywhere from 30 to 60 feet tall. And it's really interesting because it actually has three different leaf shapes. So this is another one of our trees that's a broadleaf flowering tree. It's deciduous, it has a simple leaf, and it's alternately arranged. And so if we take a look at these leaf shapes, there are actually three different leaf shapes uh, on the tree. So you have that uh, basic simple leaf, then you have a leaf that looks kind of like a mitten, and then you have a three-pronged leaf. And you see these uh, just even on the same branch. So very cool. The leaves, fun fact, are actually edible. They taste kind of like Fruit Loops. Um, in the fall, these leaves turn bright red, orange, yellow, purple, beautiful fall color. So if you're hiking in the woods, definitely be on the lookout for sassafras trees in October or November. From sassafras roots, we make uh, root beer and we make sassafras tea. So very cool tree uh, that you find around and famous in the south. The last tree that we're going to look at today is a dogwood tree, which a lot of people are familiar with. Um, dogwood trees uh, are really characteristic by their flowers. And what we normally think of as the flower with the white petals and the yellow center is actually a cluster of about 20 or 30 flowers. Um, in the center, the yellow is actually multiple flowers and the white petals that we see are actually bracts or modified leaves. Now the flowers from this tree are gone right now because they bloomed in early April and so we missed them for today but we can still take a look at the leaves. And so this tree is really special because it has an opposite leaf arrangement. And so the opposite leaf arrangement is uh, very special for only four genuses on the east coast. We remember it by mad buck. So M is for maple, A is for ash, D is for dogwood, and buck is for buckeye. And these are the only four genuses on the east coast that have opposite leaves. So if you take a look, you'll see that all of these leaves are in pairs. They're all opposite each other. Um, so very easy to identify, even if you're looking at the tree in the winter and looking at buds or branches, you should be able to see if it's an opposite arrangement. So very handy little mnemonic tool there. So the dogwood tree uh, really likes to be an understory tree in the forest. It loves part shade. And that's one of the reasons that we're seeing a lot of problems with dogwood trees, especially as we see an emerging warmer climate and uh, more heat waves and things like that come across our area. And so the dogwood tree, it likes to have that part shade and when it's in that full sun, uh, we often see a lot more problems with anthracnose and things like that. So a dogwood is Cornus, Florida and yeah, beautiful southern tree. Did we get any questions? 
Yes, we are on Woodland Way. That's it. Well, thank you everybody so much for tuning in. Hopefully you were able to learn a couple new trees from our tree ID walk today. Take a walk, get outside, enjoy this beautiful weather in your neighborhood. And uh, everybody stay healthy and stay safe. We'll be here next week as well, uh, Tuesday at 11.30 a.m. for another short little tree ID walk and teach you some fun facts about trees. Uh, if you have any species that you come across in your yard or neighborhood that you need help identifying, comment below in the picture with a picture and we'll do our best to look for that tree next week. So thanks everybody.